Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the CRKT CEO. Um, but first off, before we go any further, I want to thank CRKT for sending this little guy along. They sent this my way as a review sample. Um, we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and also that I'm doing my very best not to uh, let this affect my review, but nevertheless, that's where I got this guy from. I told him, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They still sent it along, so thanks, Cricket, but there you go, full disclosure. Next thing, size comparison. Here it is against the Spydeco Delica. Um, here it is against the uh, Spydeco PM2. And here it is against the uh, Spydeco. This is not a Spydeco at all. This is the Ontario Rat number two. Um, and so you can see here, in terms of blade length, we're actually not all that far off of the PM2 here. This is not a tiny knife, although it certainly looks that way externally speaking. If we actually measure this guy up, we're coming in a little bit over three inches here. And that's uh, it's non-trivial. So um, th th there you go. That's your size comparison. And, um, that is, well, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Long day. Um, next thing, this is a Richard Rogers design. Richard Rogers is a custom maker um, who a lot, he's actually pretty hot right now, so to speak. A lot of people are interested in his work. Um, this is actually the first knife that's been designed by him that I'm actually aware of having handled. So um, that's kind of cool. But anyways, um, it is one of his designs. It is based on one of his customs vaguely. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and then there, there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So first off on the good side, this is actually a reasonably lightweight knife. Um, it's not the lightest thing ever. I mean, it does have full steel liners as well as a reasonably bulky little backspacer back there. Um, we're coming in here at 2.07 ounces, but it's still under, it's well under an ounce an inch Um, because it's a little bit over three inches of blade. So uh, lightweight wise, well, it's lightweight. Guys, as you can see here, this is, this is going to be a this is going to be a doozy of a review. Um, <laughs> so it's a relatively lightweight knife. That's good. It's also a reasonably nice size. Um, the reason I say that is, you know, not necessarily, it's maybe a little bit big in terms of blade length, but size-wise, it's actually coming in around the same size as your average everyday carry pen. In this case, this is a Twisby, uh, Eco, or a Twisby Classic fountain pen. But nevertheless, um, you can see here that size-wise, this isn't all that far off of being just a regular pen. And that actually makes this guy accessible for uh, not only easy to throw in your pocket, is something like that, but it also makes it pretty accessible for shirt pocket carry. Um, this could very easily carry like a pen, um, and that can be a, a nice thing, particularly, and I think this is really designed for that in many ways. You clip it in your, uh, with a deep carry clip, you clip it in your shirt there, and then you're able to just pull this guy out, pop it loose, whatever. That can be a nice thing, so I think that's a nice little size, and I think the overall arrangement of it does make some sense. So that's good. Next thing, um, I like this backspacer a lot. This is a silly thing to say, but at the same time, you have a mostly polished, it's not like, here, let me put the freaking blade away. Um, it's not like a full mirror polish or anything like that, but you can definitely see a little bit of mirroring on here. It is a beautiful, beautiful backspacer here. Um, and it goes down between there. It allows this to be a two-screw knife, which I always very much appreciate. And just frankly, it's it's well done. I think it's an attractive little piece, and it adds a little bit of panache to it. Having that little bit of polish at the end there is, it's a subtle thing, but it actually adds a lot to it. So I like the backspacer a lot. And actually, that brings us to the fact that this guy is a relatively classy knife, generally speaking. Um, you know, it is most Mostly, it comes across mostly as metal, and then this textured GRN here, uh, the glass reinforced nylon, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's some variety of polymer or another, but anyways, it, uh, it, it, I told you what variety, guys, I told you, this is going downhill right here. This is why I'm not the CEO of any companies. Um, but anyways, this is, uh, a relatively classy looking substance, and it's coupled with nice polished liners, the nice polished backspacer here. This guy comes across as being a substantially classier knife than a lot of, well, frankly, what's out there generally. It's got a little bit of a chromey look to it. The clip itself is a little chromey. If they're trying to go for pen, you don't put the knife company name on the outside there. Just saying, guys. But nevertheless, and you've also got flush screws in here, which is a really nice detail. Um, It's a little thing, but very often companies get that wrong. They'll make a deep carry clip, but then they'll have screws that protrude up into that area, preventing it from carrying it deeply. This is a nice little detail. Um, And so overall, I think it's a very classy little piece. That that That's nice. Um, Then finally on the good side, uh, actually not quite finally, I I do like the fact that the entire blade is hidden within this. It's sort of a, uh, it's relatively uncommon. A lot of knives will have, for instance, a fair amount of, this is a Spydeco Native Chief, have a fair amount of blade hanging at the top of this guy. In this case, actually, the entirety of the blade is hanging out inside of the frame here. And so the only way to get to this thumb stud is via this access on the outside here. 
And so, I, I, actually, it works fine, um, but it's kind of cool that the blade is entirely MIA, so to speak, until you pop it open, and then, boom, there's a blade. Then, finally, on the good side, the price on this guy, I think, is actually pretty reasonable. It's 40 bucks, um, and look, you know, would I like to see it cheaper? Absolutely, but it actually feels a, a good deal classier than the price tag, which is good. Um, so, I, I, I very much like that fact, and uh, I, I, I think it's going to come in at a good price for a lot of folks. It's nice and affordable for them. So, um, that's a beautiful thing. So, on the good side, you have a price that I think is pretty good. It feels a lot classier than the price tag implies. It has a nice size, a wholly hidden blade. The backspacer is great. It feels just classy, generally speaking, and it is relatively lightweight with a very nice carryable sort of thing that belongs really in a shirt pocket more than anything else. On the great side to me, I actually like the action a lot. Um, it took me a little while to get used to it because my initial instinct is to kind of press up that way, but that doesn't work at all. Instead, you kind of want to vector the force roughly like that direction. So you want to really pop it like that. And when that happens, because this guy is on bearings, it actually is a pretty compelling action. It comes flying loose. I know there, there, there's no wrist flick or anything like that, so don't complain, freaking commenters. Uh, it, it, it is absolutely 100% going to deploy. The detent on it is good. It's just, it's reasonably well done. It's a reliable action. It's, all, I'll be honest, it's kind of a fun action. Um, and so to me, at least, that's what's great here, is that in addition to having a knife that looks substantially classier than you might think, um, based on the price tag, it is also pretty well done and feels pretty good in the hand in that way. So um, to me, at least, that's what's great is the action. Bad side, 8CR13 MOV steel. Come on, CR KT. Uh, 40 bucks, okay, I guess, but it's it's unimpressive. We'll just put it that way. Next thing, if you were thinking about this as a gentle person's knife, it is going to be a little bit big for some people. Um, very often in an office sort of situation, uh, three, three inches and change might still raise a couple of eyebrows, especially being that this is a long, stabby sort of stiletto blade. Um, so, you know, do keep that one in mind. I definitely thought this was smaller until I saw it in person. and was like, whoa, okay, it's a big old CEO. Uh, <laughs> big Gaudas so to speak. So, um, there you go. Next thing, they definitely missed the sharpening choil here. You can see there's a little bit of smile at the bottom of the blade. Um, and the, the, the thumb stud will make your sharpening job much more difficult because you will need to come at it from this angle off to the side here in order to get at that. But the problem is if you come at it from that angle, you're going to end up hitting this little part. So I feel like really to adequately sharpen this knife, you're probably going to end up taking this guy out of the handle going that route, or any, especially on a stone to get it at the right angle, you may end up even having to take off the thumb stud. Either way, sharpening on this guy is not going to be super straightforward um, with most systems. You can probably pull it off, especially with a rod-based system, but yeah, that's, that's going to be something to consider. Next thing, edge on this guy, relatively thick. It's not the end of any world, certainly. You can see right there, but it's definitely a little thicker behind the edge than I might like. But then again, it's a relatively... It's actually not very thick blade stock, but it is just a very short blade with a saber grind. So yeah, it's going to be a little thick behind the edge. That's kind of the nature of the beast. But I'd like to see the beast have a different nature, so to speak. Next thing, ergonomics on this guy are okay. Um, you've got some hot spots right off this little area here. You've got a hot spot right off the clip here. You've got hot spots in the back. You can see here it's digging into my head. You know, it, 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 it's definitely not a knife that I would want to be cutting with all day, every day. If you are the CEO and only taking this out to cut a piece of fabric of fabric, uh, probably a thread is the term I am looking for there, off of your uh, crazy Italian suit, or I don't know who makes good suits these days. I don't freaking know, Icelandic suit, whatever. Um, If you're using this to cut a thread off your suit, it's not going to bother you. But if you're trying to do real work with this guy, this is going to be a little bit problematic for it. I'll also say that the balance on this guy is a little far back. It's not the end of the world, but we're balancing someplace in this vicinity. And I, I tend to like a front of balance, so to speak. Um, And so there you go. Um, Next thing, ac accessing the stud definitely takes some learning. There is a trick to it. Once I got that trick down, it became relatively easy. Um, But you're going to want to keep that in mind. The first day or so, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to get in there. And then finally, on the bad side, accessing the lock bar takes even more work. There are really two strategies. One is just jam your finger in there and hope for the best. And that generally works out okay, although it's not the most comfortable thing ever. The other strategy that I find myself using regularly is this guy, where I use my fingernail and my index finger to get up in there close it that way. I have relatively small hands, and so I suspect the, uh, the lock bar access problem is actually going to be more problematic for other folks than for me, but that's definitely not something I'm a big fan of. I kind of wish they'd scooped a little bit more of this out of there um, to, 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 to give you better access. I get why they might not have design-wise, but it just doesn't feel so amazing. So um, to me, at least that's what's bad, is that lock bar access is kind of a problem. Getting to that thumb stud and using it properly has a bit of a learning curve. Not the end of the world. The ergos on it are okay. They're good enough for cutting a piece of thread off. 
off, but probably not what you're going to want to be using, you know, breaking down boxes or jumping out of airplanes. They could make a tactical version, the COO, uh, chief operating officer. No? Okay, that was hilarious, by the way. Um, anyways, the edge is relatively thick. They miss the sharpening choil. It will be a little bit hard to sharpen because of both the thumb stud and the proximity of the handle. Um, it is a bit big for a gentleman's knife, and it is, or a gentle person's knife generally. Um, and it is 8CR13 MOV, which is, eh, okay, I guess. On the ugly front, there is only one ugly thing here. Um, some people will say this is entirely subjective, but the thing is, um, no, I'm correct. Um, the, the, the only correct answer for Carrie is tip down. Um, I'm sorry, tip up, tip up. Oh God, what did I say? Um, no, this is carried tip down. This knife only has one position that you can carry it in, and that is a tip down only carry position. Um, and that's not frankly amazing. I'm not a big fan of that. I really wish that they had the option for us to carry this either tip up, as it should be, at least in my estimation, or tip down. Um, I can understand that tip down actually would work a little bit better for shirt pocket carry, because think about it. If you're pulling this guy out of your shirt pocket, your thumb is already going to be roughly where it needs to be to pop this guy open. So if this is a shirt pocket knife, then tip down might actually be a correct answer. But if you are putting this in your pocket, for me at least, that the lack of tip up carry uh, kind of is a problem. That's a... That, it's something that bugs the crap out of me. So I really wish, I, I can see how the shirt pocket thing might motivate tip down being an option, but I don't know why it's not, uh, th th why that's the only option. That bugs me a little bit, and I find that personally ugly. If you like tip up carry, then boy, do I have a knife for you, or tip down carry. I have a knife for you, but otherwise it's pretty ugly. So um, to me, that's what's ugly is tip down only. Um, Final conclusions. I feel weird about this knife, um, because in some ways, this is one of those knives that I like more than the sum of its parts. It does a lot of things that kind of bug me. It's one of the knives that's hard to review because the, the, the emotional experience of it, um, it, it actually carrying it, actually using it, is a little bit different than the sort of reviewer nitpicking experience. Handling it for review, the gripes are definitely there. Oh my god, are there gripes? I mean, it's an impressive steel with thick edge, strangely large blade for a gentleman folder, so-so ergos, poor lock bar access down here here, tip down only carry. I mean, so version two could definitely fix some gripes. I mean, heck, just drill another hole right here and we're good to go, guys. I know there's a little more to it. There's a little smart ramp in there to get this up onto the clip, but still, seriously, you can pull it off. I believe in you, Cricket. But the thing is, even with those gripes put in there, I think it has a definite charm. Um, it is lightweight. It is reasonably sized in the pocket. It is a decent price point, and the action is quite good. And if the idea of shirt pocket carry, if you have yourself a pocket protector with your pen and your other stuff in there, if that idea is appealing to you, then actually this could be a very nice little choice. Um, you know, inside the breast pocket of your suit, your fancy Icelandic suit, this could absolutely be something that's excellent. And I find that the action on it is is quite good, and especially given this price point. Um, they're 40 bucks, you know what? Okay. I'm pretty okay with that. So ultimately, my conclusion here is it's not a super high-end knife. I mean, if you are the CEO of anything too important, there are certainly classier choices. Um, I have a whole list of uh, classy pocket knives that you can check out there for uh, some more expensive options. Um, and so, you know, ultimately, I don't think it's going to stick around for me, mostly because of the you know, carry orientation and because I'm mostly a pocket carry kind of person. But I do think it's going to be a knife that a lot of people are going to consider. Because, you know, honestly, it's a price that's going to work for a lot of people. It's a knife that's classier than its price point is. And even if you're not in love with this guy, necessarily. Um, at the very, very least, the CEO here is a cheap executive officer. Uh -huh. Anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, and uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.